Okay, well, I'm going to uh, lead you through today this simple um, painting of a building. It's actually a Suffolk, uh, taken from a, uh, a cottage in Suffolk, uh, a farm building. And uh, as you can see, we've got the gable end that comes towards us and the roof running across. And um, we've got some tree work either side, a little bit of foreground. And I'm just going to show you the simple way to paint this sort of subject. Now, what I would say is, um, you know, after you've seen the demo, then then have a go yourself, really. It's, um, you know, it's always nice to see a demo first. OK, now I'm going to just damp. I'm just going to have some hard edges on this here and there. So I'm just damping the paper in places, uh, allowing that to soak in. Now I'm going to use um, cobalt blue as my blue for the sky. Nice blue cobalt, uh, quite a decent blue. Not going too dark yet. And I'm going to drop a little bit of blue in there, a little bit of blue in there. We're going to have the light coming from the left, a little bit of lighter blue coming there, and a little down into the horizon. And that's really, I mean, sometimes that's all you need for a sky, really. You know, just a little bit over there. Just dash that in. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to put in a little light red into that cobalt blue just to show the underside slightly warmer grey undersides to the clouds. So it's cobalt blue and light red for that warm grey just to get a little bit of grey on the undersides of some of those clouds. Just a little bit more water to that. Cobalt blue, light red because I prefer warm greys rather than cool greys when I'm looking to um, create these uh, cloud undersides to the clouds. Not too worried if it goes over the building there. See how it's a lovely cool grey and that's what I'm looking for. And for the tops of the clouds I'm going to simply add um, a little bit of yellow. Um, Naples yellow. Um, just clean the brush. Naples not a bad idea. Uh, also use raw sienna, burnt sienna, uh, just just to give tops of those white clouds a little bit of warmth. Not too concerned if it comes up a little bit green. And that is all you need to do for the sky. I'm just using a damp brush just to finish off, just to lift away a bit of colour near the top of that building. But other than that, that's the um, the sky. Now the next thing is to bring that sky down into the foreground. So I'm just slightly damping that. I'm going to use Naples yellow again with a touch of cobalt blue in there just to give me a slightly greeny yellow like that and just paint up in to that dry area to create a bit of distant land. We are. Bring that through into the foreground. And that's all you need to do. Nothing too fussy. See the way I've painted up into that dryer. So I've got two layers of paint. Then it comes into one layer. Um, that's worked quite well. Now the green. Well, I'm into that Naples. I'm going to add a stronger yellow. That's cadmium. With a touch of the cobalt blue. To start with so it's a stronger yellow a stronger blue well same blue but a stronger yellow uh, and just try and introduce that to either side just going to show a bit of pathway there either side of the um the track that's all you need to do there you go sweep that across bring that up into the trees and as you come forward add a little bit more yellow like that, just to give you a richer green. Uh, a little bit more yellow. Very rich, nice rich green. I'm certain that you keep that track um, quite jagged and uneven. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one of the, you know, you know, quite often in these tracks is it's sort of like a grassy central verge. Well, I'm going to put that in as well. That's just something I've just thought of really. So I might as well poke it in. Now, as I come right into the foreground, I add Prussian to the cadmium. 
So it's Prussian blue, cadmium yellow with a touch of burnt umber to get that nice sort of dark green because I always like to see dark greens in the foreground and just touch them in here and there. Just one or two little touches here and there to the left hand, to, sorry, to the right hand side of that central area. And really, now let's go one tone darker in the foreground because I like to have nice strong foreground. So more paint, less water and less yellow in the paint, in the green mix. There we go. Nice strong sort of shadowy tone and, and right the way across that central verge until there okay so that's um, the first stage not you know quite simple we've got to try and paint this in real time so you know need them um, so you can see exactly how long this sort of picture takes now i'm going to paint the roof that's going to be light red i like light red for what would they be um Pantar roofs probably light red uh, a little bit of burnt sienna just to knock that light red back into more of a brown and you normally find um, roofs are quite dark so a bit of burnt umber in there with the light red just to give it a bit more depth and all you do you paint across and quite often you've got ridge tiles they've got little gaps so you leave one or two little gaps here and there just a suggestion of a, of a ridge tile work. Um, sometimes it's not particularly straight, particularly if you've uh, not got a very steady hand. And um, then we paint across and down. You can leave one or two little patches unpainted and quite a jagged edge down that side. We don't want a too cleaner cut down that outside there. There we go. One or two tiles beginning to get a little bit out of shape quite often you get that on these on these cottages um, you know we don't want to uh, overdo the fussiness of these and also just show a little bit of the edging tile down the left hand side don't go too far with that gone a little bit far with that that's fine rip that off oh and a, just a touch here because you're just going to see where the chimney finishes there you go um, now while I'm doing that, while it's still damp, I'm going to drop in a chimney. Now this chimney, I'm going to add a little rose madder to the light red. Because I want this to be, I'm only doing the shadow side to start. Now, I'll leave the sunlit side. Short, I'll do that shortly. So that's the chimney dropped in. Let's do the sunlit side as well. There you go. So let's not be too fussed. And for the chimney pot, um, well, one's going to be a red chimney pot. That would be, well, there's two there. One stands behind the other. Two chimney pots there. And this one is going to be a yellow. So I'm using cadmium. Puts a touch of cadmium. You very often get those light clay pots rather than the red so that's a nice little bit of um, interest there now i'm going to paint that gable end is suffolk pink so all i'm going to do use rose madder very very weak and we'll call that suffolk pink leave a small gap when you come up to the tiles because that is the pointing on the gable end where the tiles meet the wall and paint it fairly loose notice how I'm, you know i'm not picking around the edges i'm not worried too much i'm going around the windows and the doors because they will have light frames but basically um i'm just going to paint that uh, uh, that sort of color now this is red brickwork um so it's light red and i'm going to put a bit of yellow with this quite often you get light red um and a bit of yellow gives you quite a nice sort of brick feel. It, it, quite often walls are never quite as dark, a bit more yellow than than uh, than the window than the roof work. So um, just leave a bead of white here and there. Paint around the windows. Um, there you go. 
trying to paint this as I say in real time so as you can see the complete process and see how easy it uh, it really is you just paint around like that really you know have fun with your artwork you know don't try and be too fussy with 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 um, uh, what you're trying to paint really is important uh, to um, to get um, freshness into your work now I'm going to use burnt umber now into that to start the gravel area for the path or the track and notice I'm just pulling that through entering that into the gateway and then just rubbing that away so it's um, goes off around the corner and into there and just rub it away there we go um, so that's that really you know nothing too fussy with that um, okay so we've got put in a very loose sky we've got in the roof work we've got in the the, the rendered uh, gable end of, of that part of the building the brickwork of uh, of the um, of the right hand side and um, now we're really ready for we could either we could do two things here we could either paint the um, the greenery either side and then the building or we could uh, finish the building off but really we haven't got a great deal to do to be fair um, okay let's let's do the greenery while that building dries um, the greenery on the left there there's just a tree so all you do you get you mix Prussian blue with cadmium yellow not too much on the brush hold the brush on the side and just drag across there you go keep that top very open and as you come to the building you will need to cut in neatly down there and darken the color so I'm adding a little bit more brown and a little bit more blue to try and get a darker tone and I'm just going now this is where I will need the point of the brush just to finish the gable end like that there you go just bring that up just a little higher as it goes out of picture there we go nothing nothing too fussy with that bit more blue bit more burnt umber and this will give you a lovely deep dark green now which you just drop in here and there just to try and get a bit of variation of tone within that and that will sharpen up the corner of that building extremely well and that's the way you produce the tone values between the lights and the darks uh, of a building that's uh, uh, that's got tree work around the outside and we'll put a hedge in there haven't drawn it but that's what I'm going to do so I've left an area unpainted and then all I'll do for that is just get a um, a blue green well not too blue but a very much light green just do the tops leave plenty of white so that's the head, the top half of the hedge where the light is catching get some darker green perhaps with a bit more brown in it just to do the lower part there you go and make it nice and uneven where it meets the ground and that's all you need to do for a tree and a hedge and this same sort of brownie green I'm going to put a shrub on the side of this then you just pull across like that nice and neat down the side there get close down there and then just pull that there like that a little bit of grass around the base of the uh, of the of the posts and then add a bit more yellow to create a different green for this tree well it's more of a more of a shrub really and that I'm not going to make too dark there we go then just pop that into there one or two little patches of grass while I've got the brush shaped nicely there we go just showing where the track runs away one or two little touches here and there nothing too fussy there we go we've got the green either side now we do the windows well we use cobalt blue and we can use um, burnt sienna yeah let's go for that uh, make them more brown blue you can make them blue if you wish but I'm making them a bit more brown blue 
and for this exercise I'm actually going to paint the glazed areas leaving the white frames unpainted and you'll see the benefit of that later on so that's the glazed areas notice how quick that was how loose that is that's the way you need to paint to get fresh clean watercolors there you go um, oh there's another window there I'm going to keep them all the same and I'm not filling in every single part of the pane I'm leaving one or two little areas a suggestion particularly along the sill just as a suggestion of uh, something in the uh, in the windows then I'm going to paint the doors well that's, that's quite a warm building so I'm going to put a blue door on one just cobalt blue again um, painting the door leave the surround I think with this there you go so that's cobalt blue for the door there you go nice thin door there uh, this one let's have put a brown on that burnt umber could have left it white but let's put a burnt umber door that will give us leave some little patches of white on that maybe a, a small window maybe a letterbox I don't know um, it's up to the viewer to decide and then with that burnt umber I'm just going to stroke in um, a couple of posts gate posts that make them too large in other words they look too big for the house but there you go um okay while that's dry really all we've got to do now is to put in the shadow work and um shadows okay uh let's go cobalt blue again let's go let's go red again let's go light red um shall we let's add this rose matter in there so it's cobalt blue, rose matter, touch of light red to give me that nice sort of cool. Don't want, I don't want too. I want a cool um, shadow. Now, when you look at a building like this, right, you've got to think about light coming across. At the moment, that that gable end looks very flat, as if it sits within the the building. But of course, it doesn't. It comes towards us. So the way you show that is from the top. You would so you'd start out or oh, we've just got to have a little bit of uh, shadow for the chimney on the roof there we go mustn't forget that just running up the roof so that's the chat shadow from the chimney then we run down at an angle like that depends on the angle of the Sun but basically that's more or less the angle I would have thought would be sufficient and under the overhang there okay so that immediately tells you that that uh, roof comes forward I'm going to go a little bit stronger with the color now now cobalt is not all that uh, intense a little bit more blue and of course then you have the um, the overhang of the roof line on the side of the building okay and you may have bit of guttering you might as well put that in with the shadow um, then the building actually then overhangs that area there and it p comes right over that window because it stands away from the roof stands away from the um, the building itself so you can see that it comes forward we also have a shadow down there overhang shadow bit of gutter work there like that so that there again it can be quite wide it can be quite narrow depending on the light how you know the angle of the Sun now here's something that I always like to do um, to put in um, where the chimneys have got that overhanging brickwork uh, just drop some shadow in a little bit of shadow down the right hand side of the um, chimneys because they are in shadow it just sharpens those up and of course the windows now 
windows quite often they can be flush but I always like to put in a little bit of shadow on my windows so because to give them the impression that they sit back and we've got a shadow across the top down the right hand side across the top down the right hand side across the top down the right hand side same with the doors across the top down the right hand side and all of a sudden those windows sit back nice and neatly this is still wet but I'm going to bang it in anyway and there we go across the top down the right hand side um, there you go nothing more simpler than that to paint a building and then finally we just need a bit of green really a little bit of dark green um, just to suggest a bit of damp I just dropped a bit of paint on there that'll dry up um, just really suggest the dark green on the uh, on the on the track really so I'm using burnt umber with Prussian blue for this dark shadow green a bit more Prussian in there to make it slightly more sort of blue green it's not a bad idea for shadows uh, on grasses and um, we may have uh, obviously we'll have a little bit of shadow from and here we go some of that may be in shadow that if that bush is sitting behind the building then that will be in shadow there you go and that would cast a shadow across the track like that there would be some shadow from that gate post some of this would be in shadow on the left hand on the right hand side and underneath gives a 3d effect to that and uh, right we may very well have we're just going to show a little bit of the track or the path leading to the track like that so that's all very interesting also we're going to show a little bit of this track here uh, just where there's one or two little touches just just bringing the heights of the one or two little grasses in the foreground don't like to do too much of that because sometimes that can overdo it and also on the left hand side of the track there that's it there we go so you've got a building and in a landscape there we go and maybe just a little bit of a hump there and finally we'll wipe some of the shadow across the foreground I always like a bit of um, um, drama into the foreground uh, maybe it's a, it's a tree out of picture that's coming across pulling a shadow from the right hand side across the track like that up the other side and of course that would go over that central area like that and then we'd meet that up with a shadow on the uh, on the track and that is all you need to do to create a simple little landscape painting with a building and all you need to do really at the end and this is something I always recommend um, I haven't put a piece of tape around this one, but I would recommend that you actually put a mount over the top like that, just to see exactly the composition that you've created. Okay, just have a little bit of um, water coming in on the side. If you do get little runs, you watch, I'll just nip that off with a bit of tissue before it completely dries, and there we go, it's gone. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, just going to hone in a little closer so you can see um, some finer details. And if you notice, um, you know, it's fairly loosely painted, but all together, and can you see how that window, um, that window there is beginning to come, to come back now. Uh, when I first laid the colour on, you couldn't see it, um, but um, it's just beginning to come back. Um, and uh, and altogether, um, 
That is how to paint a simple building in a landscape. Hope you've enjoyed that. Stay tuned for another how to um, watercolour demonstration uh, coming up very shortly.